Growing up, when I thought about Penn State, no question football was the first thing that came to my mind. And why not? They won a couple of national championships in the 80s, nearly won one in 1994, despite going undefeated. They got second in the country to Nebraska, and they've had some good teams since. But when you think about Penn State now, or at least when I think about Penn State now, football's not the first thing that comes to my mind, and neither is athletics. There's no doubt that the uh, child sex abuse scandal uh, that became nationally and worldwide a major story because of the disgusting acts of one evil monster known as Jerry Sandusky who should be given the 35 to maybe 50 gun salutes that have to spend 30 to 60 years um, in prison uh, for his actions. Um, when I think about Penn State, unfortunately, um, that event takes precedence and it goes to show you that, that you know what, doing this blog you know, might be a great escape from real life, you know, regular issues, but I never had to go through anything like those innocent boys had to go through. Never. And um, football is just a sport, okay? And talking on here, you know, is it, so, so it's, not, it's not even a comparison, not even on the same level as having to deal with what happened to those innocent boys, you know, because of Sandusky. I mean, Sandusky should be given the 50 to 60 gun salute now for, for, for all that he did. And who knows, he probably did even more than what the uh, courts you know, were able to find out, more than what Louis Free found out. Free found out quite a bit. But not, to, not getting out the beating path too much. Let's, let's, um, we, we are going to talk about Penn State in this uh, football preview. And, you know, Bill O'Brien, I thought, did, did a real good job, you know, in, in 2000 and, you know, 12, 2013, you know, dealing with the on and off the field. Um, um, you know, everyday battle of life that he had to go through. And for the Penn State players, the ones who stayed, which was the majority of them, you know, they came to Penn State because they wanted to be Nittany Lions and finish their careers Nittany Lions. They didn't come because of a past or current head coach. And I really think O'Brien made it worth their while that they finished their careers at State College PA. James Franklin, you're number one. Of course, we know that he turned Vanderbilt football around, um, started at Penn State last year. They started well, went through a four-game losing streak, but then pulled it together for six wins, and they found out, of course, in September that year that the NCAA was going to rescind their uh, bowl ban, so that way they were eligible for a Big Ten title and eligible to participate in postseason. They got six wins. They uh, got to the Pinstripe Bowl and beat Boston College. Big reason why they finished with the winning record because of defense. Um, defense, they were number one in the Big Ten um, when it came to uh, points allowed per game, 19th in the country, third in the country, 100 and yard, 101 yards rushing allowed per game. It's one heck of a rush defense. And talking about total yards allowed per game, they were third. Um, I believe they were second, remember, second in the country and number one in the Big Ten. 278 yards per game is all they sacrificed. That's pretty darn good. You return seven starters from that unit. Defensive tackles, they're back, and I'm wondering if they're going to be back for the senior year. And I know Penn State fans are saying, shut up, we need them to stay in 2016 as well. But that's going to be it for debate because Austin Johnson at 325 pounds and Anthony um, uh, Zettel, both are um, very talented juniors, and they are both good run stoppers. Defensive ends, though, they're not going to be as experienced to watch that area. Linebackers, two of the three come back, including the middle linebacker, that's uh, Nain Wartman, and the outside linebacker, and a good one in Brandon Bell. Secondary, um, if you thought the linebackers and the defensive tackles could play, this is the most experienced area for Penn State, in my opinion. Um, if you look at the corners, um, talk about Trevor Williams, one of the few upperclassmen on this uh, Nittany Lion defensive unit. He's a senior, and um, at safety returning is Marcus Allen, whom as a freshman did some good things. And not to be confused with the Super Bowl 18 MVP and, of course, playing for my Oakland, back then, Los Angeles Raiders, um, Marcus Allen. Not him. Trust me. If he were, he'd be in his early 50s. I don't think Penn State would have him on the team. But uh, this Marcus Allen as a sophomore. Expect big things from him. Defense was good last year. Offense, oh, my gosh. If you want to compare Penn State's offense to a bucket of crap, only difference would be the buckets, okay? Especially when it came to trying to protect Christian um, Hackenberg, and no question, uh, defensive units were hacking all over Christian. Um, when Hackenberg was was in the game, which was most of the time, but not all the time because of injuries, and you'll see why. 44 sacks allowed by the Penn State offensive unit 
up front last season. One of the biggest reasons, lack of experience. And that's where the lack of scholarships, I think, played kind of a role because they had a lot of players out there that just did not have the experience um, to be a cohesive unit. And you saw problems not only protecting Hackenberg because his touchdown to interception ratio was worse his sophomore year at 12 TDs and 15 interceptions than in his freshman year in 2013 as a true freshman, 20 TDs and 10 interceptions. Big difference. And Hackenberg himself knows that he can get better by getting rid of the ball quicker and making better decisions. But when you have defenders coming right at you and not a whole lot of time to throw, you get those kind of stats. Almost everybody returns on the Penn State offensive line. Watch for the play of the uh, left tackle junior college transfer. That's Paris Palmer. Um, unless he beefs up, he'll enter this season not even at 275. So that's an area to watch out for for that critical left tackle position. But the other down lineman returned. Running back-wise, Ariel Lynch is back. But, again, he needs room to run. Last season, Penn State was bad as far as running the ball less than three yards per carry. Wide receiver, a little more optimistic about this area uh, because you return um, – uh, Dreshawn Hamilton, 82 receptions as a freshman last year. So his stock can, will, will continue to rise as long as Hackenberg can get the ball to him. So Penn State offensively it's what you need to know. Uh, they were dead last um, last season in the Big Ten when it came to um, scoring points, only 21 per game, and 113th in the country running the ball only 101 yards per game. So if they can get just a little bit improvement offensively, should make for a better year wins and losses wise because I think defense will be just fine as long as the defensive ends can get pressure on the QB. Special teams, um, James Franklin calls the following guy, Big Toad, that's uh, that's uh, Julius, Joy Julius, walk-on freshman. We'll see if he can get the job, um, and we'll see if he can keep the job. And punting, well, look, if you're Penn State, you got hope it's better. Right now that position is up for grabs. Uh, grabs it was inconsistent last year. Schedule for Penn State, um, Temple. Not a bad team. You play that on the road, but Penn State, not that far of a trip. They'll get a lot of fans at that game. Temple won six last year, but did not get a bowl invite. Buffalo, and then you get Rutgers for the Big Ten opener at home. Should be a win. San Diego State, not a bad team, but they got to make the cross-country trip to State Valley PA, or State College PA, excuse me. And sometimes West Coast teams have a difficult time adjusting to the time and also that jet lag from cross-country traveling. We'll see because San Diego State has a good rushing offense and, by the way, good defense. That could be a low-scoring game. Army and Indiana come next, and Indiana, of course, is a, is a conference game at home. Could Penn State be 6-0 entering the second half of the season? I'm going to give you the final six opponents, okay, because this is going to be big for Penn State. At Ohio State, at Maryland, Illinois at home, at Northwestern, Michigan, in between Northwestern and Michigan's a bye week, and you close out the year at East Lansing against Michigan State. You know what all six of those teams have in common? You're going to say, oh, they're Big Ten schools, dummy. <laughs> now, all six of those teams beat Penn State a year ago. All six of those losses came to the six teams I just uh, named off. And four of those games are on the road. I think Penn State's capable of winning two or three of them, but not all of them. Ohio State and Michigan State on the road is going to be very difficult. I got Penn State closing out this report. Eight and four for the season. That is a uh, win improvement of about one. 4-4 four four conference record, which will put them at a tie for a third. It's a team that, because of the defense, will be in every game they're playing. I still just don't trust an offensive line completely. Um, and we'll see how Hackenberg does as far as decision-making as well. Plus, special teams has to prove to me that they could be a valuable unit and not a uh, Achilles heel. 8-4 and four for Penn State, I think it's pretty respectable. I think the following year, if they can keep some of those hot juniors who I think will play well this year, like the defensive tackles, if they can keep them another year, Penn State could be on that same level with Ohio State and Michigan State. But right now, they're at least one level behind those two teams. That's a look at Penn State. Catch you next time.